Welcome to another History Mystery. I'm your host, Mimi, and today we'll be taking a look into part of Thomas County's identity. It's April, which means spring is in the air, and the annual Rose Show Festival is in full gear. This event brings in people from all over creation to view and compete in floral competitions, parades, and other fun activities celebrating our town as the City of Roses. But how did we get here? There are other places around the country, even the world, that claim to be the Rose City. So how did we get the moniker too? To answer this question, we have to go way back to the first roses. Various types of roses can be found on either side of the hemisphere, but the oldest rose in the fossil record was found in Colorado and dates back to roughly 35 million years ago. Around 2000 BC, people in what we now call the Middle East began cultivating roses for their medicinal properties and adding flavoring for food. Roses spread into Europe through the Roman Empire, where enslaved Europeans grew them for use by emperors. Ever heard of Antoninus? Rumor has it he smothered his dinner guests with falling rose petals, but that remains unsubstantiated. By AD 500, the practice of rose cultivation spread east to the Chinese Empire, where growers propagated new varieties. The Silk Roads of the medieval period allowed merchants to trade roses across the Eastern Hemisphere, and thanks to European contact with the Americas, rose varieties were traded back and forth all over the world. So what about our neck of the woods? And why roses when there are so many other beautiful types of flowers out there? Throughout history, growing roses has gone in and out of vogue, just like any good trend. During the colonial period in North America, colonists wanted to embody the same look of wealth and culture as people in Europe. Europe was going through a new wave of garden planning. The formerly popular tulips from Holland were out, while rose varieties from the Middle East and China were in. American colonists, with enough money and means, imitated their European friends by growing their own rose gardens, and the climate of the Americas supported these hardy roses. George Washington was well known in horticultural groups for his skill with growing roses, and Thomas Jefferson had several varieties of roses growing at his plantation in Virginia. In 1844, one of the first American nurseries dedicated to growing roses was established in Philadelphia. Everything was coming up roses. In the southern colonies, and later states, the story was no different. Down here, people began planting Cherokee roses, a high-climbing variety that was, and is, often used to create hedgerows or barriers to keep out wandering animals, and sometimes people. This time of year, you can see these flowers blooming all over the county. That brings us to an important question, though. How did the Cherokee Rose get its name? There's a legend told among members of the Cherokee Nation about the origin of the roses. During the forced removal of Native Americans from the southern states, the tears of the women being removed fell to the ground, causing the roses to bloom in the same spot as a sign of hope during a tragic time in the nation's history. The white petals of the flower represent the Cherokee people, while the yellow center was associated with gold, which is often found on the lands that were once inhabited by the Cherokee. Many people outside the Cherokee Nation also believe the flower is native to this region, and it was even named the State Flower of Georgia in 1916. But that's not quite the case. Cherokee roses are a variety first bred across Southeast Asia and brought to Virginia around 1780. Some historians attribute the rose's widespread popularity in the southeast to a man named Thomas Affleck. Affleck was a businessman who bought a Mississippi plantation in the 1840s. He used the plantation to create the first commercial nursery in the south. Using enslaved laborers to do the bulk of the work, he grew a variety of food crops as well as cotton and his ornamental plants. Using what he learned from the plantation, Affleck wrote several books on plant cultivation that were widely used by other southern farmers, gardeners, and plantation owners, all wanting to emulate his financial and aesthetic success. That gets us to a pivotal moment in rose gardening and the history of Thomasville. In 1867, the first hybrid tea roses were developed. These roses had a nice tea-like fragrance and had the added enhancement of blooming twice in a year 
Soon everyone in the rose game was experimenting with new varieties of roses, and the trend for roses was back on. At the same time, Thomasville was entering the resort era. The Civil War did a number on towns across the South, and the effects of Reconstruction were not exactly reconstructing anything. But there were some creative people in Thomas County who saw a new way to resurrect the economy. By inviting people from the northern states to come vacation or work in Thomasville, the county could lift itself out of the economic depression that limited so many other southern towns. And it worked. People came from far and wide looking for work, improving their health, escaping the winter, or just plain getting out of town. Thomasville and the surrounding county did far better economically than many of their neighbors, and many of her citizens also improved their lives and living conditions. Many people had the money to make home improvements, including returning to their gardens, bringing in the latest varieties of plants and flowers. In 1875, Thomasville held its first horticultural fair. County organizations had been putting on fairs since 1868, often centered around agriculture and technology, but this was the first fair to focus on plant life. A newspaper article in Thomasville shared some complimentary words from the newspaper in Dawson, Georgia about the horticultural fair and our roses exhaling their fragrance on the balmy zephyrs that are kissing the fair faces of the Thomasville bells. Future fairs like this one popped up over the years and the people of Thomasville gained a new name for growing several varieties of roses. In 1893, the newspaper claimed one yard in the city yielded a bouquet of 85 different types of roses. Visitors wrote home to northern newspapers gushing about the county and all its amenities, including our rose gardens that blooms throughout the year. Even after the resort era dried up, the craze for roses remained, if not intensified. As early as 1913, people were calling Thomasville the City of Roses. The new brand stuck, and the people of Thomas County were eager to add roses everywhere. A rally in Quitman featured cars from Thomasville decked out in silk banners with roses printed on them and the town's new moniker. The first rose show was held in 1922, with interest in the event growing over the years. Eventually, we gained a movie theater, aptly named the Rose Theater. Even our local baseball team was named the Thomasville Roses, a name that did not strike fear into their opponents, the Albany Nuts. Despite the initial excitement, world events like the Great Depression and World War II nipped the fun in the proverbial bud. In 1947, a Rose Queen was added to the Rose Show event lineup, sparking renewed interest and competition into the Rose City. But do roses always rain? In 1968, the Thomasville Times Enterprise published an article claiming there weren't enough roses in Thomasville anymore. The writer complained that fewer gardeners were dealing with fussy, disease-prone roses, and more and more homeowners were opting for easier plants. The city and local garden clubs answered back by planting rose beds across the town as part of the Area Beautification Program. Because of their efforts, the city maintains several rose beds that show to visitors that we really are the City of Roses. As the Rose Show kicks off, we welcome you to come visit us at the museum, where we are showing off some of the beautiful dresses from past Rose Queens, alongside memorabilia from Rose Shows gone by. Be sure to visit us between now and the end of April to see the exhibit. If this video interested you, be sure to check out our website and social media, where you can find more pictures like these, and be sure to leave us a like on this video. What topic would you like to see on an episode of History Mystery? Let us know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching!